Okay, friends. I pulled on Instagram on whether I should do this in an IG Live or if I should do this in stories. And then I decided that I was also gonna film it for YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, know that I also did this on IG Live, but it will be on IGTV. And I'm gonna do cheese maintenance, which is, I have wheels of cheese waiting to be vacuum sealed. I have wheels of cheese that we have been eating. This was like a half wheel that really I should have vacuum sealed wedges it already, but I haven't, but I need to because now we have a thing of Colby, a thing of Gouda, and a thing of Parmesan open in our fridge. Hey, um, what's the other one I need to do? Oh, and then there's one that the seal popped and um, you can see it's getting moldy. So I'm gonna show you how I deal with this because this is not garbage. This is just fine. And there's a right way and a wrong way to deal with this. So I'm gonna show you the right way because I know the right way and I know the wrong way. I've done both. So we have a very fancy vacuum sealer. And the funny story goes is that actually, actually there's a whole lot more fun to this funny story. Freya's first birthday. She didn't need anything. She was a third child. She needed nothing. My mom was like, well, what are you gonna get Freya for her birthday? And we're like, we can't think of anything she needs or she's one, she doesn't want, she doesn't care. She doesn't want anything. She doesn't know that she wants something other than to nurse. So we needed a vacuum sealer. So we were like, you know what? We're gonna buy Freya a vacuum sealer for her birthday. And my mom even contributed to it. So Freya is six now. So we've had this vacuum sealer for five years. It's a Weston Pro 2300. Um, the reason we wanted a bigger vacuum sealer other than just a food saver is that a food saver um, usually overheats in our experience and you can't do a whole bunch at once. And we often have like, you know, if we have like a stack of salmon to deal with, we'd be like hours vacuum sealing because we have to let it cool down and this and that. And this is a fan cooled motor. Um, we had used one of a friend's and when we bought it, it was like $600. So yeah, it was an investment, but we love it so much. Um, so the rest of the story to do with Frey's birth, first birthday is that um, we lived like not in town, we lived like on the outskirts of town, but we were zoned a rural property. And Marius shot his shotgun, um, which it was like, at, there was like just a small family party and then like he shot his shotgun and it was like, that's too long of a story to explain. Anyways, the neighbor reported us. And um, the police came. <laughs> And the police were like, can we see your gun license? And they see it and they're like, what's your zoning here? And we're like, we're zoned rural. And they check that and they're like, so by your gun owner rights and your homeowner rights and all these things, you are allowed to shoot your shotgun on your property. But because of the governing body, CRD, Capital Regional District, Salt Spring Island, where we lived at this point, didn't have, they don't have a mayor. They have Capital Regional District. The way the CRD works is it's complaint driven. So if your neighbors continue to complain about you, you will get fined and get tickets, um, even though you're allowed to do this. If people complain about you enough, you're gonna get tickets. <laughs> so that was Frey's first birthday party. Um, I got a selfie with the police vehicle and my sister and Freya. I'm not sure if we have a picture of her with her cake, but we have a picture of her with the police truck. Um, I asked the police officer and he was like, yeah, as long as it doesn't end up on Tinder or something. And I was like, okay. At that point, I didn't know what Tinder was. So that's the story of our vacuum sealer. Now let's get on to this. Oh yeah. And then after the police left, Marius is like, we had been thinking about moving and he's like, we're moving. And I was like, yeah, I kind of figured that. So. Let's deal with the open cheeses first, and then we'll deal with the other cheeses. So, we buy, I've tried a lot of off-brand 
like not food saver or Weston vacuum seal bags and some of them are junk. This one is called Houseables. Oh, you can't see it. I'll link all this stuff. Um, these ones are called Houseables. This is like the second or third time we bought them. We love them. They work great and they are significantly cheaper than the food saver ones. I do need to get some skinnier ones. These are really wide ones, so they don't, they're not always the best, but scissors. So here we have a spice Gouda that as you can see, it's got a bit of blue mold to it. This is not a problem. Um, if it was like a Technicolor mold other than blue, I would probably cut it off. This is not too significant. Um, I have a little wedge, but I'll just leave that out to get eaten right now. Um, if the cheese had not gone moldy in this bag, like if I had done this right away, I would have just reused this bag to do that. But since the cheese went moldy in here, all that blue mold spores are in the bag and I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna tuck this in the fridge, we'll eat this, and then this bag will get chucked. I neglected some cheeses for too long. So to deal with this mold, we're going to vinegar wash it. If you vinegar wash with white vinegar, in my experience, it brings all its friends with it and suddenly your whole entire cheese is covered in blue mold and you're like, what, there's sap in there. But if you use apple cider vinegar and specifically apple cider vinegar with salt in it versus white vinegar with salt in it, it definitely kills that mold and stops its spread. There still will be like, especially if your surface wasn't perfectly level, like perfectly even, sorry. Like if you look right here, you can see there's some blue mold and there's some little holes. So that blue mold will be in that holes, but blue mold is not bad. Blue mold is blue cheese. So this is now what I would just call a blue Gouda. It'll be a very mild blue cheese and it will be delicious. Mold on cheese is not scary. If you're that scared of it, just cut it off. I'm just gonna wash it off. So I need some salt. So what I'm gonna do here is I just have a little bowl and I'm gonna throw down some apple cider vinegar. This is a new jug that's not opened. Some apple cider vinegar in there. So I probably have a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna actually measure this for you guys. And yeah, I'm just measuring it out of the top of my salt grinder. A teaspoon of salt. So we just stir these together because the salt is just going to help inhibit the melt mold growth. With my fingers I can tell if the salt is dissolved. Okay so now what I do is I grab cloth or whatever. So we're just gonna dip our fingers in here. What is Rowan doing out there? She found ice and she's stomping it. Okay, just a second. Um, this is just raw apple cider vinegar. So there's a question there, is this just raw apple cider vinegar? Yes, unfiltered, unpasteurized with the mother. So it's in that salty vinegar and I'm just going to wipe it. And because I'm now making this wet, I will leave it um, on the counter. I won't vacuum seal this one right away. I'll let it air dry on the counter. So for this, I just, cause there's a lip from where I pressed it. So I'm trying to pay attention to two cameras right now. Uh, so I'm filming this for YouTube and I'm doing this right now. So we just, get in that crack and see there's still gonna be a bit of blue, but we're just kind of curbing its growth. If I saw black or yellow mold, I would be cutting that off. But blue and white, or like a little orangey one, those are all normal cheese ones. I am doing a live video. Yep. 
Okay, so we're gonna leave this one for a few to let it air dry. So this Parmesan here. Hi, Mom. So we're looking, hi, Ro. We're looking at two things here. So we see this white powdery stuff. This is exciting. This is Lippe's. Lippe's. The cheese? Yes, it's cheese. Um, Lippe's is added to a lot of cheeses like Parmesan and Asiago. Coffee catcher, thank you. Freya, could you play with Rowan elsewhere for a few minutes? Okay, Lip, does this work on store-bought cheese or just raw that you make? I don't see why this wouldn't work on store-bought cheese. Okay, so Lip, Rowan, Freya, please. Okay. Mom, mom. Lippe's. Mom. Yes, Rowan. No, you're not watching a show. <laughs> Sorry, scattered there. Lippe's is added to Parmesan and Asiago often. Even with raw milk cheeses, people add it. Um, Lippe's is that um, nutty taste that's Parmesan, it's Asiago. Like that's, mm, that's that nuttiness that you know, that's Lippe's, which naturally occurs in milk. Um, so there is like a little bit of blue going on here, so we'll give it a little white, but all that white is super exciting, and this is delicious. So this cheese, it tastes totally on point. This is a December 2020 Parmesan. The taste is there, but the it's too soft still, so we've still been using it. I probably just did too high of fat. Parmesan is a skim milk cheese. So, your bottle's on the table. Hey Freya, whining's not gonna get you anywhere. If you're bored, go finish helping with the boys. Okay, so your bottle's on the table, Ro. Ah, okay, so we're just, I'm only wiping where I see blue. That's your bottle from earlier, Rowan, that you didn't finish. <laughs> there is some cracks and crevices where this is gonna be a bit of like a blue Parmesan, um, but that's okay. Blue Parmesan is delicious. Blue Asiago, blue cheddar. If it's just got like a little bit, like I'm not a blue cheese person, but it's really delicious. So, I'm also gonna leave this wedge to air dry on the counter for a minute. And here again, <laughs> I think Rowan was into this cheese. Okay, so we're just gonna wipe the blue on this one too. Freya is sitting on the couch um, sighing and moaning about how bored she is. I'm not quite sure what she thinks it's gonna get her. Okay, I keep accidentally showing like my eyeballs in this other video and not the rest of me. Okay, so again, we're just gonna leave this wedge here. And again, because this bag went blue, actually, you know what, it didn't go blue enough. It didn't go that blue, that's fine. We're gonna reuse this bag. So we'll just trim this. And I will reuse this bag. Yes, Fran? No, you are not painting your nails right now. Well, then find something to do. Freya, chill, okay? So normally we would not have like three huge amounts um, of cheese open and then end up with some going moldy. I don't know, it just, things got crazy is what it is. Okay, so there's a question here. With a tiny amount of blue on the Parmesan, does it taste way different than a normal Parmesan. No, and Mac is very sensitive to the taste of cheese. Other, he, like, he only likes like Parmesan, butter cheese, Colby, Asiago, mozzarella. Like he likes very cheeses like that. And um, he's not bothered by if there's a bit of blue. As long as he doesn't see it, he doesn't really notice it. Like I have a blue cheddar that we don't like it's just cheese and crackers, but I put it in something like a casserole and it was so good. Okay, so here we got a little more funky town going on. So if you have black mold, cut it off. 
This here, we actually have a little bit of black mold as well as blue, as well as some lipase. Which is interesting that lipase is already forming on this because this is only made in July and this is either a Colby or a butter cheese. I didn't label it properly. There's gray, yellow, and white. I'm, well, no, those are hot peppers there, yeah. but yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do here. Mama? Yes, Fran? Can we have the pomegranate? Um, not right now, wait till I'm done. Okay, so where we have this bit of black, we're just going to cut it off. Um, if you follow black sheep school of cheese making, which is David Asher, or we know him as David. He wrote The Art of Natural Cheese Making. I will never forget him saying he was teaching cheese making at our house. Oh, and this one ended up with some tortilla chips on the bottom because we used it for nachos. Someone said, what about black mold? And he said, oh yeah, cut that off and eat it first. And I'll never forget him saying that. He, like, and if Marius was here, he would probably be eating these chunks that I was doing. And if this was a cheese that we were just like eating right now, it wouldn't be a big deal, but because I want it to stay stable for long-term storage, this is a live video, Mike. Um, I want to just nip this in the bud so it doesn't take over the whole cheese. What's up, Mac? Thank you for doing the garlic. Looks good. Okay. Yes, David is the very best. He's, his name is David Asher Rotsain. And when he was writing his book, the publishers are like, that name is too much. You need to, you need to make your name smaller and easier to say. And he became David Asher. And we will always know him as David. He's David. He used to milk our cows for us. Okay, so we have, I just gave a quick wipe where I'd cut off the mold too. And we're gonna leave that one to dry off too. So, Matt, could you not climb in where I'm trying to do here? Now we're gonna move on to wheels I need to vacuum seal. This is a wheel of gouda that i overheated and you can tell yeah and david's family is jewish um so you can tell here there's some cracks this means the cheese got overheated um too dry i kind of just went forward salvaging it the best i could knowing it wouldn't be the perfect gouda um it's a botched gouda so we call it buddha so I will label this as Buddha and I know any cheese I label with a B is because I botched it in some way. And I will on the bag, I will write uh, red pepper flake Gouda overheated. And I think it's important to remember that like when you, this is why when I teach cheese making like to my insiders, I teach not just how to follow a recipe exactly, but like how are the curds supposed to feel so that if yours feel that way a lot sooner, you know you need to stop then and not keep going. Okay, Mac? Hey, what should you get? Okay. Hi. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited. The November Insiders content is starting to roll in from Naomi, a birdsong farm, and um, her she's sharing her traditional cheddar recipe, which I'm so excited. And she's remade every one of my cheese recipes. So my Gouda, my Asiago, and my butter cheese, she's remade them. No, thank you. Please get down off of the counter. She's remade them to be used with pasteurized milk um, because there's a few tweaks you need to make. Okay, please stop picking up my cheese. Could you get down? You guys can't see the girls. <laughs> the other camera can see the girls, but um, yeah their chaos so I need you to get down please I need the counter you guys need to back off good morning Amos you woke up from your nap please get down Freya help her get down that doesn't belong in your mouth please get down off the counter I need the counter they were all outside when I started this so I've got my wheel of cheese 
And I'm going to estimate my vacuum seal bag. I always go a little on the big size because it, um, it, uh, when it's just too small, that's really annoying. Okay. So this is going to be a little noisy. It's not too bad, but you, I, I won't talk when it's on. So you take one end and we put it in and we're just sealing this end because at this point it's just a, so we put it in. I actually like to buy pre-made bags so that it speeds this up and they're smaller ones so they just fit a wedge of cheese. But I'm just out of them and haven't restocked. So. Okay, so now we can seal. It has a nice seal. We check. The first one sometimes doesn't seal perfectly. I might have to redo it when it's just warming up. And we put our wheel in. So a four, this is a four gallon wheel. And this is what fits in these. This one, I'll show you, it won't fit in square. Like, you can't just put it in. But I have figured out a way to make it fit in a bag. So, works good. I need you to stop picking at my cheese. The wheel, the cheese is not ready yet. Okay. Yeah, you put your hand on it? Hold it. all nice and sealed. One side is bumpy, one side is flat. So on the flat side, I'm going to put mild red pepper Gouda, uh, I meant to write Buddha, oh well, Gouda. And then I'll just put overheated and I washed a little less. Gouda is a washed curd cheese. Um, Look at the And when did I make this? Uh, Say October 10th. It's been sitting in the fridge for a bit. So, there we go. It's all labeled and it's ready to go. Um, our root cellar is cool enough that I can put it in the root cellar now, which is awesome. Right so, So for this one, this is a seven gallon wheel. Let's see, what does this weigh? Marius was like, I think the battery on your scale is dying because you can like barely see the numbers and he's looking as he was weighing jerky this morning. Then he's like, actually, I think it's just really dirty. And he cleaned it and he was like, oh yeah, it's just really dirty. Now you can see. There's butter because I use my fingers when they're all buttery. and. We're not vacuum sealing your cow. Thank you. It's eight is cow. No, in my cow. Eight and a half pounds. In my cow. This That's a lot of cheese. This is big boy. Oh, so my goal is to have a four pound wheel per week. So that means I need to at least make a four pound wheel a week. Or like when I make an eight pound wheel, well there now I don't need to make one for two weeks. Okay, stop making that. I'm gonna make Gouda or Feta today, and then Clover's just about dry, so then we're not gonna be making cheese for a while. Make this fit in the vacuum seal bag. We're gonna cut it in half. I always use a knife way bigger than what I need because then my hand can be safely on the blade and my hand isn't like on the tip because I'm always afraid of it like slipping and then like slicing. Yeah, don't cut your hand right. Of slicing my palm open. So I do a much bigger knife so I can get a nice. I won't cut my hand. Thank you, Ro. 
I don't want <laughs> and then Mary says cardinal rule of knives. This gets washed and dried and hung up right away. Don't throw it in the sink. Don't you dare put it in the dishwasher. You wonder why your knives are dull? It's because they're in the dishwasher. Dad has a small knife, really sharp. Dad has very sharp knives, yeah. Okay, so if we put the cheese in a little offset, it fits in just fine. Although this wheel is a little bigger than average, so. Like this one. Let's see. Yeah, so like this one that I was showing earlier that I need to fix, you can see how I put it in offset. So I'm curious to see, I've only done this with about a six to seven pound wheel. Eight and a half pounds is a big wheel of cheese. We might be doing half wheels. Dad, no, Mom. Oh, no. Why no? No. So one thing I like about this one versus the Food Saver 2 is the Food Saver is sensor that you have to like put it in a certain distance for it to go and I don't, I totally wasn't paying attention to this one. Food Saver makes you have like a huge one, whereas this one I can do a lot smaller, but this one since I cut it crooked, one side smaller, one side's a lot bigger. Okay, Rowan. Freya, I need you to take Rowan and move a little farther away. Oh, Amos, you rolled onto your back. <laughs> he was playing with an egg cart and he rolled over. No, 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 this one is going to be tight. <laughs> Is toy like a toy ghost still something people say? No, it's not gonna fit. It's too tall. Let's see if I can fit this. Apparently, seven pounds is the max on this strategy. You know what? I can make it work. There we go. Yeah. Close it down for me. Okay. Now press the button. The green one. Green one. Should I take off now? Yeah. No, I bought it. Okay. So, there we go. This one's all in one bag and I have it labeled. I can't remember if this one is mild or spicy, so we wrote mild to spicy. How about this? How about this? We're gonna deal with this one first, bro. That one's more moldy, Rowan. This one's more moldy. Right, Mom? Yeah. Yeah, Mom. Yeah, Mom. We already dealt with that one. No, I haven't. I was thinking of cutting that one open. Yeah, okay, so this is September 9th hot pepper gouda. So this one is ready to eat. The thing we've discovered with the hot pepper cheese is that even though gouda taste-wise is ready to eat, after six weeks, the spice develops more. So a cheese that I thought was like not spicy enough, after six months it was like, woo doggy. Okay, so. We're just blue mold going on here. Um, but the cheese itself has like red and yellow to it so it makes it look more colorful. Um, yeah. So with this, because there's a good bit with the not sharp side of the knife, I'm scraping some off just so there's less to actually wipe off. We're scraping it off too. Oh, and you're eating it, yeah. yeah. Could you guys get down, please? I'm not on my stool. Freya, get, Rowan, get off the counter. Okay, go wash your hands, please, because I don't want you to touch the baby like that. Okay.
So this one does have a little bit of yellow mold. Anything that's really technicolor, I do like to um, trim off. The interesting thing is this blue mold, when rubbed, looks more green. Yeah, there's a bit more of that there, so scraping that yellow stuff off. So where it's going to be hard to scrape. Um, so the reason this is molded because it was vacuum sealed is because the seal broke for some reason. Um, so there was a bunch of air in there. And um, it just allowed room for bacteria to grow. And I noticed the seal was broken and it wasn't moldy at all. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll deal with that next time I deal with cheese. And then here we are and it's really moldy, but oh well. Um, we'll have a blue Gouda. Blue Gouda. Blue Gouda. We should it's like a song. I'll have a blue Gouda without you. Um, so this smells like a little moldy, but not bad. And the apple cider vinegar will really cut that. And then um, it will slightly alter the taste. It will taste very mildly like blue cheese, but not so much that it turns you off because I don't eat blue cheese and a cheese that has this, I still find delicious. Um, is there a reason why you don't package in smaller portions? Would that make it a tighter seal? So I package in a big portion for it to age and then once I taste it, then we'll usually like cut up reseal half the wheel in the original bag and then cut up smaller wedges to make it easier. Um, but it's just really cumbersome. Okay, so we have this Colby that has now been fixed and is ready. Okay, Rowan, out of there. No Sharpies for you. Okay, I'm going to do those ones after, but one I did want to do with you guys. No lip chapper sharpies is changed. Any cheese you haven't made but you want to. Not overly. We're not super fancy with our cheese choices. Just wait a second, Rose. Um, we make a lot of Gouda, Asiago, butter cheese, all that. Um, my recipes are all inspired by other people but made myself because I don't like, I have to find cheeses that actually work for me to be able to make while homeschooling, while children are underfoot, while all this sort of thing. I can't deal with really fancy recipes or really technical recipes or high maintenance recipes. Um, it had some mold and I just washed it. With Sharpie? No. It just it looks like you, I put Sharpie lines. Okay, so this one I just cut into. This was an experiment. This was a Parmesan. So if you're in my insiders and the membership, there is a, okay, Rowan. Matt, could you please, please help me with Rowan? She's just grabbing all the things here. <coughs> Rowan? There is an Asiago recipe. And my little trick is you, could you show Yeah. If you want to make Parmesan, use the Asiago recipe, but just use, skim milk, not partly skim milk. Um, and that's my shortcut difference. So this was made in January and this is cultured with kefir. So when I tried a Gouda with kefir, it took a lot longer for the flavor to develop, like a Gouda cultured with a mesophilic culture, which is a freeze dry culture. After six weeks, it's good to eat. When we tried a kefir gouda after six weeks, we were like, this is disappointing. Um, but once we tried it much longer, is this one? No, that's not a kefir gouda. Once we tried it, then like a few months later, it developed and it was really delicious. Do you have issues making cheese and sourdough recipes in the same area? No, the only time I've ever had an issue was when um, it was super hot out. Otherwise, I haven't had an issue. My sourdough starters, on the counter all the time. So 
This is a little young for a Parmesan, but I saw it and I wanted to cut into it and see how it is. So it looks super good inside. Oh, it smells so good. Do you want some cheese? No. I want some cheese. Rowan, come on. I want some cheese. Rowan. Freya, go see, Rowan, go see Mac. Oh, got it, okay. No question, but two years ago I started following your cheese videos and now we make our own regional cheese here in Turkey. Turkish egg and coast, goat skin covered in Asian caves. That's super neat. Mom, one question here though. Can I have a piece of cheese? Mm-hmm. This is a Parmesan, you wanna try it? And it's so nutty and delicious. Yeah. Mm. I love Parmesan. I've always loved Parmesan. It almost tastes like a blue cheese. No, not at all. Mm. Okay. What's your opinion on super hot? Um, when it was 30 to 35 degrees Celsius outside, like especially 35 degrees Celsius, yes, you can have more cheese, which is like above 90, like 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when I started having issues. Our house at that point was like 25 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is like 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when I started having issues. Do you use buttermilk or yogurt as cultures as well? I use um, yogurt whey and I use kefir and I use freeze-dried cultures. Um, freeze-dried cultures are nice if I'm not planning ahead. Makes it so I can kind of like last minute make cheeses. If you're making cheese with kefir, your kefir has to be like super healthy and super regularly fed because when kefir isn't regularly fed, it produces yeasts and then you're gonna end up with a yeasty cheese. You can also save the whey from making cheese and use that whey as your starter. You can freeze some. Um, otherwise in the fridge, whey like that only keeps like a week tops, whereas yogurt whey will keep a few weeks. When Rowan was a baby and I made raw milk formula for her, um, there was, this is the baby on the floor. There was yogurt whey in that, so we always had yogurt whey in the fridge and I'm just really out of the habit of making yogurt whey, so I've been relying more on freeze-dried cultures. Okay, so with this, here's my example of how I do with cheese in. The uncut in two part is going to get back and sealed back in its original bag. And this one, I'm gonna do in half and do two wedges for us to eat. I'm just gonna keep eating right now, it's so good. Um, so there we go. Then all that's left for me to do is vacuum seal this one. And actually, you know what? This one is six weeks old now. So I am going to cut one side into wedges and just vacuum seal the other side. And then I have my chunks here to deal with, but I'm gonna sign off here um let you guys go and um keep dealing with cheese so have a lovely day if you're an insider and you have more cheese making questions shoot me a message i can direct you places where there's recipes and resources in the membership and also in november so exciting what naomi's already sent me for blog posts and recipes already i'm getting really excited about so I can't wait to see all she brings and she will be hopping on my stories too and that will be lots of fun. So have a lovely day friends.